Hello, it's Thursday, March the 7th, 2024. Welcome. News special coverage on two sessions 2024. I'm Jacob, your digital anchor. We had the privilege of interviewing Henry Tang, a member of CPPCC. He has submitted several important proposals during this year's two sessions. His proposals cover a wide range of areas. Reflecting not only his concerns for the future development of the country, but also his deep commitment to the interests of the people. In order to gain a better understanding of the content, motivations, and goals behind Mr. Tang's proposals, we have specially invited him for an interview. Now, let's see what Mr. Tang has got to share. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our show today. Today, we have Mr. Tang. People would like to know about the proposal you submitted. During the two sessions, this year I've brought seven proposals, uh, all under the umbrella of how to further integrate Hong Kong into the development of the mainland and also on various issues. And one of them is the, the facilitation of the flow of people and the flow of goods. And of that, I suggested, I proposed that we all know and every time we travel out of the country or out of the territory, we are eligible, we're eligible or entitled to a certain duty-free allowance. Now this duty-free allowance uh, for visitors to Hong Kong has been at 5,000 renminbi since 1996. So long time. It has been a long time. And during this uh, this 28, 27, 28 years, I believe $5,000 doesn't go very long way anymore. So I, be, I, I strongly believe that it is time that we propose a revision of this duty-free allowance so that every visitor to Hong Kong, when they will return to the mainland, they will be eligible for 30,000 renminbi of duty-free allowance. Six times. Well, it is six times uh, okay. because I realize that many, many people come to Hong Kong uh, to enjoy our culture facilities, to enjoy many of our street foods or our local uh, tastes. But many of them actually still, con still like to go shopping for various products. So $5,000 for shopping today, of course, you'll buy a lot. But I believe many of them actually do exceed that 5,000 renminbi. You talk about mainland visitors. So we've known that people in Qingdao and Xi'an now can have their, can get their uh, entry permit. Yes. Yes, so to Hong Kong. So uh, how is the response now? Well, so far I don't know because it, just, uh, it was just implemented. But I'd like to just review, just uh, elaborate a little bit on the Individual Visitor Scheme, the IVS. The IVS was introduced in 2003 when I was the Financial Secretary because it was, post, it was post SARS. So how to increase the people flow and the in Individual Visitor Scheme was something that worked very well. It started, it started with a few cities in Guangdong, Beijing and Shanghai, but it has grown to 51 cities including Qingdao and Xi'an uh, just very recently. It has been very, very successful. I think most visitors from mainland to Hong Kong uses the individual visitor scheme. So in 2009, when I was the chief secretary, uh, I thought about how to make this scheme even better so that we can increase the flow of people between Hong Kong and the mainland. And so I introduced at that time with the support of the central people's government to have, when you have one visa, you can have multiple visits over a period, whether it's six months, a year or whatever. Again, it was very successful. We, we have we increased the flow of people to Hong Kong from the mainland. Uh, it was canceled uh, in the mid 2000s uh, at that time because there, there were certain capacity issues, so it was, it, was, it, was, it was canceled at that time. But I think it's time for us to reintroduce it, for the mainland residents to feel that Hong Kong is really part of the family, that 
ease of travel between Hong Kong and mainland should be simplified. Mainland, mainland residents can now go to Singapore without a visa. They can go to uh, Thailand without a visa. Why is it necessary for them to come to Hong Kong with a visa? So we are part of the country. So indeed, the first place that should be visa-free actually should be Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, that's all for our show today. Thank you so much, Mr. Tang.